Welcome everyone to what is the parent information element of the sixth form induction process here at North Leamington School. As you know, your children, your sons and daughters have been with us today. They've been experiencing uh, taster sessions for the three or maybe four subjects that they're hoping to study in September. Uh, I'm sure it's been an absolutely fantastic day. I've recorded this in advance of it, but I'm sure it's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, and I'm sure that tomorrow, the Friday, uh, will be excellent as well as students begin to uh, develop relationships with new people and with the teachers that will be teaching them in sixth form uh, that's a team building day basically so two days of induction prior to the summer to help ease that transition now we are an incredibly successful sixth form and i think that's partly because we've got terrific staff but mainly because we have fantastic students who are so well supported by you, their parents. So I just want to emphasize that I see that triangulation of staff, parent and student as absolutely vital to the ongoing success of North Leamington School's sixth form. Please do always see us, the sixth form team, as available to you to answer any queries. Uh, we'll do all we can to help ensure your children, your sons and daughters are uh, safe, happy, confident and ultimately successful. Just a little bit about myself. My name's Steve Taylor. I'm senior assistant head teacher at the school. I have many uh, remits, uh, including whole school literacy, provision for pupil premium students, wider curriculum provision, uh, staff well-being, so on and so forth. Uh, but primarily, my role will be head of sixth form, and it is a role that I'm absolutely delighted to have. It's, it's something I'm very proud and privileged to be the new head of sixth form. Uh, Miss Hayes, who some of you may be familiar with, is leaving us after a couple of years, and she has done a wonderful job. Very big boots for me to fill but I'm sure alongside my colleagues in the sixth form team we will be able to do that. I'm very very ably supported by Mr Piper who is assistant head of sixth form uh, for year 12, Mr Schofield who is also assistant head of sixth form with responsibility for year 13, Mrs Charman the 16 to 19 manager who's been here many years and who is um, a font of all sort of knowledge and expertise in all manner sixth form and then Mrs Thomas who's joined us recently but made absolutely terrific impact in terms of supporting students with their study, uh, their welfare and their attendance. So this team is dedicated to making decent provision, high quality provision for your, your children, your sons and daughters. And together, uh, I'm sure we will be very, very successful. I just want to start off by saying I believe it's a good choice well made by your sons and daughters, probably in consultation with yourselves as well as others, to select North Leamington School Sixth Form as the organisation or institution where they will continue their studies. Um, it is a very high performing Sixth Form and I've included uh, a table and some graphs there just to indicate that we perform in the very top quintiles uh, and percentiles uh, for academic outcomes. Uh, student destinations are very, very positive indeed. I've included a link which is on the main school website under the sick form tab for you to look at some videos if you haven't done already of uh, examples of where our students ultimately end up post 18. Uh, some lovely stories on there indicating what a successful sick form we are. I didn't want to emphasize the data though without putting it in a wider context. Uh, these are your children. I have children myself, a son and a daughter. And I don't want you to think that at North Leamington School Sixth Form we think of your children as, uh, I suppose, fodder for data. Uh, I think it would be naive to suggest that results aren't very important. Of course they are. But how one goes about achieving that is critical. And I firmly believe that as a Sixth Form, we approach it holistically. We focus on achieving outstanding academic outcomes by ensuring that our students feel safe, happy, confident and successful. In other words, we take a holistic, people-centred approach to ensuring that uh, they get the qualifications they need to get to their preferred destination. So we've said how we go about achieving these fantastic academic outcomes, how students' destinations, whether it's to university, apprenticeships, maybe taking a gap year, going to an employment, are all very positive and very good. Um, but I've talked about how we achieve that through this holistic, person-centred approach. I do want to talk first of all, though, about, I suppose, the formal academic side of uh, the learning that your sons and daughters will experience. So... For each subject, there will be five hours of timetabled lessons per week. So let's assume they do three subjects. It'll be 15 hours in lessons every week. 
Those lessons will, will be a combination of teaching or pedagogical approaches. There might be elements that are lecture driven. It's more likely it's gonna be student interactivity and uh, driven by group work and students undertaking tasks directed or facilitated by the teacher, but a real sort of uh, range of approaches so as to appeal to different uh, learning styles that students might have. So five hours per subject per week. That's then complemented by three tutor time sessions per week, including an assembly, uh, which will be undertaken by myself and the assistant heads of sixth form. That's three tutor time sessions per week, totaling about an hour. That will focus on uh, a tutor time curriculum that incorporates attention to things like well-being, pastoral care, but it will also focus on things like study skills. But again, we're talking about this holistic person-centered approach, and you can't, I suppose, identify someone as purely a learning uh, entity, a learning machine as it were, you have to think about the bigger picture. And so in addition to the pastoral element that's included in that tutor time curriculum, we do have one hour a week focused or dedicated on uh, PSHE, so personal social health education. Um, and that will be facilitated by uh, teachers who are expert in that field. So the formal academic learning, what makes up most of your son's or daughter's timetable, uh, will be this focus on the academic in the first instance, but will incorporate that idea of uh, pastoral provision and the bigger picture of your, your children as uh, people. So in addition to the formal timetabled learning that I've just outlined, um, I wanted to highlight for you the enriched and personalized approach to learning that complements that more formal timetabled experience. Students are expected to be in pretty much full time. I'll explain the, the school day and the uh, logistical side a bit more shortly. But um, if they're not actually in timetabled lessons or tutor time, they should be studying in one of our uh, year 12 or year 13 study rooms, depending on what year they're in, of course, uh, or alternative, the common room, the mezzanine, or our very well stocked library. So plenty of opportunity, plenty of resource and facility for that personal study time. The enrichment programme we offer is really important. It is a requirement that students engage with that. It's important for their applications to work, to university, to apprenticeship programmes. So we offer a full range of enrichment opportunities that students can pick and choose from, including student leadership, uh, life skills, uh, volunteering in the local community or within the school, a full enrichment programme that uh, emphasises really that we're thinking about that uh, the, the bigger picture, that the whole person. We're really lucky because we've demonstrated, I think Alan Partridge uh, coined the term bounce back ability. It's either him or David Cameron, one of the two. Uh, I think it was Alan Partridge talked about bounce back ability. And we've demonstrated a real bounce back ability post COVID and post lockdown. All of those opportunities that were denied us, uh, that were denied to your, your children in the past, we've come back very, very strong indeed. And there's lots of trips and visits available, facilitated by the sixth form team, but also subject areas. Uh, for example, uh, we've had uh, students go out on geography field trips uh, to various far-flung places. Uh, the English department took a number of year 12s to a place called Skirid Hill, which was the setting for a compilation of poems that they were studying. All sorts of trips and visits, which uh, helps ensure that enriched approach and learning beyond the classroom. We firmly believe that we should have a commitment to the local community and to charities and there's a focus every term on fundraising for a particular charity. And then at Christmas, for example, we uh, get involved in local community sending Christmas cards uh, to people that might be in care homes or homes for the elderly uh, and doing various other things to show that we're an outward facing school that we think of others. We're really lucky at the end of the year. Students are expected to facilitate this for themselves with support from the sixth form team, but really lucky that we have a work experience week, something that really, again, complements students' more formal academic learning. Uh, and we have very good uh, careers uh, advice, including very, very successful UCAS processes, uh, which ensure that students are well informed to make decisions about uh, future university applications. But again, it's not all about university. Many of our students do go on to university and are very successful in securing their first or second choice placements. Uh, it's careers and information advice and guidance around apprenticeships uh, and the world of work as well. And then finally, in terms of this enriched, personalised approach to learning, we have, as I said on one of the first slides, a dedicated officer who looks into welfare, study and attendance support. So if there are well-being needs, if there are study needs, attendance needs, um, that officer works along with others within the school to ensure that your sons, your daughters, your children are well accommodated.
So the school day looks like this. Students are expected to be in school no later than 8.45 each day and they are here uh, until 3.15, that's Monday through to Friday. On a Friday, if a student does not have a timetabled lesson and if they haven't been uh, asked to be involved in supported study, for example, there is opportunity to finish at lunchtime, but that will be dependent, like I suggest, on, on a number of factors. So Monday to Friday, 8 45 at the latest until 3.15. Students are expected to come in and they will register in their period one lesson. If they don't have a timetabled lesson, they will need to use their swipe cards to register at reception or alternatively uh, in the study room. However, it is preferable to do it at reception, so please reinforce that with, uh, with your children. Uh, you can then see the various periods of the day and there are two 30 minute breaks factored in. The tutor time applies on a Monday, a Tuesday and a Thursday. That's unlikely to change. If it does, I'll let you know. Uh, and that includes a Thursday assembly in the tutor time. So that's the, uh, I suppose, the logistical side of the school day. So we are a school sick form as opposed to a further education college and it's possibly fair to argue that in those further education colleges there's a greater level of independence for students for example in terms of the school day or the college day if they didn't have a lesson in a further education college they might well go home it is different here it is a school sick form and that uh, idea i suppose of difference applies also to things like absences so we do treat people with respect young people with respect we treat post-16 students as uh, young adults. However, we do have requirements of parents when it comes to things like uh, absences and absence reporting. So if it's an unplanned absence, uh, your son or daughter is ill on a particular day, you can either phone in or email the sick form email address by 8.30, please, to advise us of that absence. We will need a subsequent email for every subsequent day um, that uh, the student is away. If it's a planned absence, for example, an appointment at a doctor, we do ask as far as is possible uh, that uh, appointments are made outside of school time, unless of course it's an emergency, and that we have a blue slip which is completed and um, needs to be collected in advance from the sick form office by your son or daughter. If a student becomes unwell during the day, a parent or carer will need to come and collect or to give parental consent for them to walk home. Uh, the student should come and talk to the sick form team first before contacting home independently. Uh, and in terms of things like driving lessons, uh, if it's a driving test, that's a different matter. But driving lessons, we require that students do not book these during school time. Uh, when a student successfully passes their test, they do need to be, bring in documentation in order to be able to get a parking permit for school. Uh, and then just uh, on this subject of absences, I've mentioned a bit uh, a bit back uh, that uh, on Friday period five, there is the possibility of leaving early unless study support is in place or alternatively a timetabled lesson. But long and the short of it, students are required to be in full time. If they're absent, there is a need for the parent or the carer at home uh, to be involved in the process for uh, letting us know reasons and, and whatever else. Uh, hopefully uh, that makes sense and uh, hopefully you understand our reasoning behind it. Thank you. So I think this is an area where parents or carers at home can be especially supportive of uh, the sick form and uh, the people that attend it. It's in relation to dress code and uh, we are very aware of young people's want to express themselves creatively. Uh, we're sympathetic to that, obviously, to a reasonable degree. Uh, we're aware of all sorts of arguments around, uh, you know, how the workplace has changed over the years. And some people say that every workplace has, you know, dressed down um, dress codes in place. That's not strictly true. There are different dress codes that apply to different workplaces and ultimately it's down to the individual organisation to decide what their dress code is. Uh, and irrespective of any views that we might help hold personally on individual creative expression, this is the dress code that is uh, sanctioned by the governing body of the school. It is the dress code that we as a sick form team um, enforce and your support, like I say, is absolutely integral. If you could please familiarise yourself with it, 
um, and manage the expectations of your children. Uh, help us to support them. If we have to, we do require students to go home. Obviously, that's not an ideal situation. Uh, we want students in school learning. We want to be as inclusive as possible. But this is the dress code. It is what's been sanctioned and ratified by the governing body. It is what we as a sixth form uh, determined to be the expectation. So your support with that would be absolutely much appreciated. OK, so last slide now. In terms of ID badges, students who are already registered at Northampton School because they were in year 11, you can use your existing, or they rather can use their existing uh, security badges. They can use those to swipe in period one if they don't have a lesson. Please call what I said earlier, if a student doesn't have a lesson period one, they really do need to sign in at reception using their swipe cards. They can use that uh, swipe card, that security badge, also to purchase food, because we do have a cashless system here at North Leamington School. Um, I'll come on to facilities in a second, but uh, we will be introducing into the canteen area upstairs in the sick form uh, the opportunity to pay via uh, debit card. So there's that cashless alternative as well. But please make sure ID badges, if they've been had in main school, then students bring them in to help facilitate the smooth running of the first days in relation to attendance and things like purchasing food. If you are coming or your children rather are coming from another school, then they will be uh, sorted out with a security or swipe card as soon as possible. Uh, so again, it's worth reiterating that we are uh, able to offer or should be able to offer on the first day back uh, facilities for buying food that are payable via debit cards. So encourage your children to bring those debit cards in. And that brings me on to a little bit about the facilities. We've got fantastic facilities already, as you well know, uh, here that are not only available to the whole school, but also the sick form specific facilities. And we're looking to enhance and embellish those uh, over the summer and also throughout the course of uh, next academic year. So you will find, or your children will find, your sons and daughters will find that the uh, cafe facilities are very much improved, although they were very good in the first place. Uh, we're also looking to include more Wi-Fi points with stronger Wi-Fi connectivity, uh, power charging points, uh, a replenishment uh, of the tables and chairs in the sick form area. So there's a real, I wouldn't say an embarrassment of riches as such, but very good facilities available to your children on a day-to-day -day basis, not only in lessons, but in those uh, social and study areas as well. Uh, in terms of holidays, this is just under the, I suppose, umbrella term of miscellaneous. Please be aware we do require students to be in uh, for all uh, timetabled or all uh, term time days. If there is a holiday request that is made, it has to go through the school system. You'll find a link on the website. But I'm just going to say now and up front with you all that uh, it is unlikely not impossible but it's unlikely that a holiday in term time would be sanctioned and if you uh, or your son or daughter still went it would probably be uh, specified as an unauthorized absence I'm sure people understand why we all get that holidays are cheaper in school time uh, I'm sure we all wish that we could uh, take those holidays uh, when it is significantly cheaper but we have to assert the importance of being in school and studying in term time so again as with dress code we're sympathetic to different points of view but that is the uh, I suppose the policy that we, we enforce or the policy that we operate, by all means make an application for a holiday. But um, yeah, like I say, to manage expectation, it, it might well be something that we cannot sanction, uh, like I say, for obvious reasons. OK, moving on to GCSE results day and enrolment. Results day, as I'm sure you and your children are acutely aware, is Thursday, August the 25th. Uh, enrolment day is usually a very exciting, very positive day. Um, and we get to see all sorts of happy faces on students that have secured the grades they need to study the three or four uh, A-level or BTEC choices they've made for the sixth form study. However, there may sometimes be students who are disappointed. I just want to reiterate that our basic entry requirement is five grade fives or higher. If people get lower than this, the very strong likelihood is we will not be able to offer a place. And I know that people say, my child has been here for five years, etc. And again, we are sympathetic, but that is the, the standard expectation, five fives and above. And it's not that we don't want students here. It's not that we don't want to support and nurture development. It's more the case that if a student hasn't secured that basic level of five fives or higher, then we find that students very much struggle with the academic demands of sick form and ultimately end up being rather rather unhappy. 
Uh, we appreciate some sick forms, perhaps ones that uh, are in the town even, might have slightly lower grade entry criteria uh, or entry criteria. Again, that's their decision as an organisation. Our experience here is, is that students need as a minimum expectation five fives or above. Um, on results day, if your son and daughter don't do get five fives and above, but do not get the grades that were specified for their specific course, they will need to speak to a member of the sick form team. It might be that we cannot offer what they want to do, but we can offer alternatives. So if they get the five fives or above, we should be able to offer something. It's just whether or not it meets their needs as an individual. And we do offer uh, IAG or information advice and guidance, which uh, refers students to other organisations or alternatively uh, to other pathways. But uh, yeah, we want to be inclusive, but we also want to make sure that we're doing right by the student and not setting them up to fail, setting them up to be a success and uh, in a way whereby we can support them as best as we reasonably can. So just please be aware on the, on the results day, uh, supporting and the managing of expectations, five fives and higher is likely to be the, the minimum expectation and there might need to be flexibility if your child does secure those grades, but not the specific subject entry criteria. Now let's assume that uh, your child, uh, in, uh, son or daughter, successfully enrols on August the 25th. If it isn't on the 25th, by the way, if they're away on holiday, please, they do need to be proactive in contacting the sick form via email. That email address is at the bottom of this slide uh, and they need to be saying, you know, what courses they're planning to do at that given point. Uh, they probably need to be in contact with us, uh, even if they are on holiday, uh, providing a, a telephone number, for example. So again, please just help manage expectations in relation to that. Uh, in terms of the first day back, let's assume everyone's enrolled successfully. It's Wednesday the 7th of September. That is to be confirmed, but that is l very likely the date that will uh, be the first day back. Students will enter via the front of school and they're likely again TBC or to be confirmed, but likely to have two hours of additional induction on that first day. Uh, we've got these two induction days that are taking place before the summer, you know, July 14th, July the 15th, but two hours of additional induction on that first day where students get their timetables, we reiterate key messages, and also make sure that uh, external applicants are in key focus, that we've got them buddied up with someone that can show them the, uh, the lie of the land, as it were. But look, ultimately, what we I want to end on is just this, this message, really, that we are very much looking forward to welcoming your children into North Leamington School Sixth Form. We're looking forward to working in partnership with you as parents or carers. And, yeah, the past has been very, very successful. I'm sure that will be the case in the future again. Our door, as I said earlier, is always open. Please do see us, the Sixth Form Leadership Team, as key points of contact for you and for your, your children, your sons and daughters. Um, and with that in mind, if there's any queries in relation to this presentation, any specific um, yeah, questions you need answering or whatever it might be, please do email us at the email address there, sickform at northlemington.co.uk. Uh, and it just remains to say, really, uh, have a fantastic summer um, and for your children, a very successful one, I'm sure. Take care. Thanks very much. Bye bye.